Last season, the orchestra played both the Fifth and the Sixth Symphonies, not with me, but with two wonderful conductors, one young, one old. Shostakovich never wrote a note that he didn't want to write. He was a natural theatrical composer. He lived and breathed the theatre. When he was a young man, he wrote all sorts of things for the theatre. Reviews, vaudeville, ballets, operas. But unfortunately, Stalin rebuked him for his great opera, Lady Macbeth of Medsensk, and he couldn't write any operas anymore. He felt expelled from the theatre, from his natural surroundings. He had so much to say through drama. So really, from that point on, from the denunciation, the public humiliation that happened at the beginning of the 30s, in a way he hid his real self in his string quartets and his symphonies. His symphonies were his songs. He sang to his people, to those who would listen. And from the Fifth Symphony onwards, the party, the formal communist agenda, found in his symphonies what they hoped to find. Somebody who seemed to be in touch with his people was writing with great melodic power, with great excitement in the orchestra, and that these symphonies had such a wide appeal. But for those people who listened into the music rather than took it at its face value, these symphonies had such incredible compassion and, and awareness of suffering. He sang for his people. And the premiere of a new Shostakovich symphony was always an incredibly exciting event. This started, of course, with the Fifth Symphony. The Fourth Symphony hadn't been performed. He withdrew it. It is undoubtedly one of his most important works because it was written in the full bravery of writing his own path, following his own path, telling his own story in his way. But this was regarded as being against what the people needed and he needed to find a language that was more direct but without compromising himself. He did that with the Fifth Symphony. The Fifth Symphony is deeply autobiographical and finishes in an atmosphere of defiance. That again is no victory at the end of the Fifth Symphony. It's Shostakovich saying, I will only write what I want in the way that I want and at the time that I want. The Sixth Symphony, extraordinary as it is, very surprising, shorter, seems to be missing a movement, something he apologised for, but of course he did that in the full knowledge that the Sixth Symphony stands as he, he wanted it to be. And the Seventh Symphony, of course, was intended to be on a bigger canvas. It was intended to be describing bigger events. But still the fear and repression under which they all lived, which is so hard for us to even imagine. The image of Shostakovich in his flat having packed a little suitcase which he kept by the front door of the flat in case the knock came during the night and he was taken away. It's haunting. It was a situation that so many thousands of people knew and recognised. Shostakovich's achievements and genius and fame superficially seemed to protect him from destruction, but he was very near being carted away year after year. Nobody knew whether or not they would see him again. And that applied to so many of his colleagues and friends who overnight disappeared and were never seen again. So his Seventh Symphony connects to the Fifth and the Sixth in that it tells the same bleak story, but with music of great power and beauty. I think of this music as being epic, more epic than the very personal number five and the very different number six that seems to be laughing at the end. It seems to have a high-spirited finale, but it's the, in my view, the maniacal laughter when the alternative is just to cry. They say this about nursing, don't they? When you see so much pain, so much death, that you have to laugh to keep the balance of your life. And in the last movement of that synth symphony, I see something similar, this incredible, Rossinian, often barked like energy, light, trivial, whistling, but underneath it there is such a spine of strength. 
and I think that was his greatness. The Seventh Symphony goes into another, if you like, another plane and constructs these movements that have such amazing sense of scale and epic suffering, epic expression. And I think it's one of his greatest achievements.